Yeah. What's up, everybody? This is Skylar with Savage Truth Six Hundred Three, and I'm here with Brandon Finney, who's a former state rep. Former state rep, right? Yeah. And the uh, he's you said that you're the singer for Shrouded Luminosity. Mm-hmm. Awesome, man. Awesome. So uh, this is the first time that I've tried anything like this. Hopefully, it's gonna go well. We're gonna we're gonna talk about a bunch of different subjects, do kind of a, a long long form podcast type thing, and see how it goes. So welcome aboard, <laughs> and you welcome aboard, my Thank friend. You. And then like, I posted a video of me doing a Pantera cover. I did uh, Cemetery Gates. And Ooh. they muted me like right in the middle of it. I was so fucking pissed. Why? Copyright. And so I'm trying to fight it being like, I already put the, the thing I'm supposed to say in the video. Like I don't own the rights to the music or whatever, but like, it's so fucking annoying that like, as soon as you, you try to do something, the uh, digital age yeah. is a weird one. Cause that's, cause this comes down to the argument about like, is intellectual property, uh, like you know, can the government really enforce intellectual property? And like that's a that's a hard question for a lot of the libertarians to to come to an agreement on because you know at what point do we allow the state to get involved in private contracts? Right. You know. But then again, the argument is well, the state constitutionally is supposed to enforce those contracts to make it fair and equitable. Yeah. So it's and I can I mean I can see the state's involvement on that because it's it's if you were um a commissioned artist and somebody, you know, commissioned you for a painting and then didn't pay for it or you created a painting and then just came and took it, that would be mm-hmm. that would be stealing. So I just feel like Sorry, I'm probably not close enough to my microphone. Well, for a lot of people their argument is that you can't own an idea, but it's like you can actually. Yeah, you can. You know. Well, there's patents on it. You can get a patent on an idea mm-hmm. with nothing more than like a chicken scratch on a on a napkin. Mm-hmm. So, I think I personally think that people should definitely own the rights to their music, and that it shouldn't just be taken f- at free will. Mm-hmm. That's your property, that, and that's where the licenses come in because someone can buy uh, a license to that without claiming ownership it's just uh it's like a lease right they're they're paying for the rights to use that right but it's not permanent yeah and then and then the creator of the music gets royalties and Mm -hmm. yeah that's gonna be good right there boy (laughs) (laughs) so obviously the first thing that i would like to talk about is the virus and the civil liberties that are being infringed upon as a result mm-hmm. here in New Hampshire. And and I would like to first say that um, ours are not being infringed as much as other states. Our governor wouldn't take it to... He knows better. He yeah. knows his base. Right. Here in it, New Hampshire, we don't fuck around when it comes to that kind of stuff because yeah. we will actually go to the state house and stand on the front lawn with... All of our guns hanging out, being like, "You fucking work for us, guy." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and um, I'm glad that we still have that spirit in this state, but I, I'm worried that it's gonna fade over time. Well, I mean, really, the the biggest issue that I see this as is recording is it? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the biggest issue I see is the infiltration of all the commie bastards from south of us, Massachusetts, and mm-hmm. you know, even from Vermonters. Mm-hmm. Um. That uh, I am very fearful is going to have a negative impact on the next gubernatorial election. Because mm-hmm. Sununu's not running anymore, and you can like him or hate him as a libertarian, but... <clears throat> He's running. I thought he was done. I don't remember hearing that. I thought he said this was going to be his last term. I'm going to oh, Google weird. that. I'm going to Google that. Yeah, because... You, have... do you, you want to run a fucking Google machine real quick? <laughs> Yeah, because uh, I don't want to look stupid. I don't either. I don't. I don't want to wear that. Do you want to put it up? Oh, actually, yeah. If you want to do it on your phone, you can. Oh. Uh, I can. I'll edit it right into the video after the fact. Chris Anunu, uh running twenty twenty. I guess. Yes, Chris Sununu is running for governor of New Hampshire in 2020 in the gubernatorial. Awesome. And that's from his website. Okay, that makes me happy. 
Yeah, because he's running against uh, Andrew Belinsky and Dan Feltis right now, who are both terrible. <laughs> All right, uh, Felt Feltsky is he the Democrat? Feltis. Feltis. Yeah. yeah, they both are. Okay. Andrew Belinsky is um, he's an executive counselor. Dan Feltis is a state senator. So, I guess. I'm concerned with the I don't I don't know why we haven't passed legislation in the state of New Hampshire that that makes people have to be a resident um to to vote. Well the the term that's actually used is uh uh domicile. Right. That's that's the legal term that that we use in New Hampshire because um our re- requirements to be um a resident of New Hampshire, it's it's complicated with how our constitution is structured, right? And um, unfortunately, what that creates is uh, a lot of it creates a huge influx of v- voters that don't actually live here via uh, college students. All these college students come from out of town. They vote in our elections, and they have the power to swing our elections one way or the other. And we all know which way they're going to swing them. I mean, I've been on dating apps, and I've seen. Um, uh, literally, women say, "I'm just in New Hampshire to change the politics." Like, are you are you for real? And and they do carpetbaggers. They, they come, what they're called. yeah, they come here to to damage our our way of life and change our way of life. And it's it's absurd because we live here because of this way of life and because mm-hmm. this is the way we want things. Yeah. Um, my problem is is the the college students who consistently argue against. Uh, any bill that comes to the election law committee that has anything to do with with voting rights in New Hampshire because they they feel like even though they're actually resident out of state because they're going to college here they feel like that they have the right to participate in who we elect um, in our state from local all the way up to to governor so excuse me I personally have a problem with uh, with that way of thinking because um, you know, again, you're, it's a, it's a skewing of the, of the statistics of who votes, what percentage, you know, actually comes out to vote. Right. Um, and we never can get a true percentage because the numbers are consistently, fl- fl- the, the, um, they fluctuate right. based on the population of the, of the college towns. So do you, I mean, I, do you support, um, a change in the way that we view domicile or the way that the wording is to to make it so somebody has to be a permanent resident before they can vote in our elections well i know that um you know for instance i have friends who just moved to rochester and uh, one of the first things that that they do is they go to the city clerk you know to register to vote um i don't see anything wrong uh with that if you're coming from another address in New Hampshire, um, right. I think the stipulation changes when it's someone who has an out-of-state address who moves here. They register to vote. Um, I think there should be at least a six-month, um, you know, like planting period. I sure. guess uh, just because I think that's the fair way to make sure that the person who's voting in this election um, is a legal voter. Because some, because you can get arrested for illegal voting. It's yep. it, you know, it's a real thing in this country. So, uh, I think we have to be careful of not, um, I guess, doing that to people. <laughs> so, know? I mean, I would, I would be in favor of up to a year. Um, you know, you have to be a resident of the state of New Hampshire for a year before you're allowed to vote in our elections. Because I think, you know, and and I think there needs to be, you know, more to your residency than just having an address i think that you need to have a job and and show utility bills and i mean that i think that would help filter out a lot of the a lot of the college kids because Mm -hmm. um it's you know they're only here for part of the year um, they can't work but it is more than six months so uh i think a year would be a a good buffer you know Mm -hmm. to to make it so that people who well the arguments that 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 come up against that that i've heard in these committee uh, hearings for these bills is that you know you are unconstitutionally restricting the right to vote if you're 18 and you live in the united states then then yes like you have the right to vote i think every state has the right to implement its own uh guidelines um stipulations 
um, to protect the integrity of the vote in this particular state. So do you think, I mean, I guess, is, is, are you, are you stopping somebody from voting or are you stopping somebody from voting where they don't currently, um, where they don't currently reside as a, as a permanent resident? Because you're not, you're not stopping them from voting. You're merely, um, telling them they have to vote where they're a resident. So I, I, I don't, I don't necessarily feel like that's a violation of the constitution. I mean, I, I would, um, so, you know, as, as support changing the wording, uh, from, you know, from, uh, from, oh my God, from, d uh, domicile, you know, you know, to resident, um, those kind of bills did come through the house when I was still there. Yep. Um, and I did, you know, s uh, s um, I voted for those changes, uh, you know, for the idea, you know, again, of, of, of protecting the integrity of the vote, um, but also trying to manage, um, I guess, who lives in New Hampshire. Like, there, you know, people that aren't trying to, you know, uh, um, subvert our political process, you know, for instance. Right. And, you know, there are people who intentionally move here to run in our elections. Yeah. I don't agree with that. I think that's wrong. Um, but in order to stop some of that, then I would, you know, uh, you know, uh, s s uh, um, I would, um, be in favor of a bill to change the wording. Nice. Uh, but not to stop anyone from having the right to vote, but making sure that they're actually planted in the state. Right. I Agreed. don't see anything wrong with that. Okay, cool. Um, you're, you're a registered libertarian, correct? I awesome. Am. Awesome. So here in New Hampshire, we haven't had a a full restriction on our on our ability to move and to do business. Um, some of it has been limited. We haven't we're not able to dine in restaurants or bars. Um, a lot of the stores around here have chosen voluntarily to go to like online orders and curbside pickup rather than having people in the store. So there's been a lot of restrictions on on business, but some of it is voluntary and some of it is is was suggested at the at the behest of the governor. So mm -hmm. um, some other states are on mandatory uh, lockdowns for lack of a better word. I mean, really, that's exactly what it stay is. Stay at home so, orders. Yeah, yeah, stay at home orders. And we don't, you know, our governor said he wasn't going to do that. Um, and I think we can both appreciate that very much. Mm -hmm. um, but what are your what are your thoughts on the, on ordering the businesses closed, the restaurants closed and bars? Like a, a lot of people were very upset and, you know, screaming about their civil liberties. And I personally have a little bit different opinion. Yeah, so as I was saying, um, I can see, you know, on the one side, we're trying to flatten the curve, right? That's the term that everyone keeps, you know, talking about. And, and the other part is to contain the spread so that we don't have more cases to worry about and, and the potential for fatality. Um, they want people to to be you know be willing to self quarantine and and be isolated for a little while so that we can contain the spread of the virus but on the other side i can see it from the liberty um perspective where the government shouldn't have the right to basically you know collapse our own economy in the wake of a temporary pandemic yeah. or a temporary you know crisis um i think in these cases, the state and the federal um, state powers they they um, they tend to grab more power. Um, and for instance, the federal um, I'm sorry, the House is trying to pass a bill um, called the CARES Act, which is the 2020 um, you know Patriot Act, essentially, okay. where the federal government is trying to uh, end, end to end encryption between all online, um, you know, participants in social media or, or financial institutions to be able to track people on their movements, where they are, if, if they're doing the, the social, uh, distancing thing, like, and most people aren't paying attention to what the house and Senate, um, you know, like what bills are going through because the media is perpetuating uh, the mass hysteria over an illness that, you know, not to downplay it, but is not at, at the level that we get with even the uh, seasonal flu. 
where it kills, you know, on average 50,000 people a year. Right. Um, I don't, I don't think that the response to this pandemic has been responsible. Um, I think it's been very uh, reactive at the expense of our rights. We we should have the right to be on private property if if you know they give consent. You should have the right to be able to exchange uh, goods and services if you so choose, as long as you're not harming other people. And if you feel sick, don't be in public. It's it just seems so simple, but for a lot of people. They can't follow those directions because it's always about, well, it's what I want to do. Well, sure. I mean, you are you are in control of your own life, but at the same time, you're perpetuating the problem if you're not taking responsibility for yourself. Okay. And I, so I see – I can agree with – points on either side of the argument sure. and and i definitely <clears throat> i see both sides of the argument too um I, I think that there's a we're doing ourselves a disservice to compare this virus to the in, the influenza virus it's not an influenza virus at all no, and it's it's, not. it's it's far more um infectious than influenza so the problem is that people are are asymptomatic for up to 14 days and can shed the virus for i mean i've seen as much as 37 days um so before they get sick they shed the virus and even after you know if they only get mild symptoms they still shed the virus for after that you know that period of time so it puts a lot of people at risk and then on top of that um and i man i feel like I hate to sound like I feel like I sound like a fucking liberal when I say this, but like there's so many people that that are in the you know the service industry that would be better off to stay home because it's gonna spread like wildfire if right. they don't and 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 as much as it like I can't I you know me I don't I can't stand taxes I I don't like big government like that's mm. just not who I am at all. Um, but I, I do get a little caught up in the what are what would everybody do if like they're bought because you're right it's it, all businesses they're 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 private property they're private businesses and this in by the constitution standards the state doesn't have the right to tell them to close their doors no so but what what if they just decide to and then and then all of their employees are out of work and can't even maybe they can't claim. Um, unemployment because they haven't been there long enough or if you think about it that stuff's already happening i know you know but the state is stepping in to help people and the federal government is stepping in to help people and and normally they're helping I, people i with, know with with their own um, and there's a major caveat attached, yeah. oh av uh, trust me like <laughs> i did a whole video on this like this is not free money and i don't want anybody to think that i'm flip-flopping on this issue because i, I don't want anybody getting getting money but like I do think this virus is serious and and I was I, I followed it from a while ago and I was I was pretty scared man and not not a lot scares me but I've also like since a, I was a little kid had this like feeling that it was going to be a virus that was going to do us in yeah like I've just known since the I was a little of kid sorts. man yeah and I don't think this is the one but I think this is a big eye opener, and I think that the government's reacting the way that they are because they they know a lot more about what's happening than we do. They're, well, they're they're always preparing. Yeah, but you know, for the worst, like but my they're conspiracy also planning brain, all the worst. <laughs> my conspiracy brain says they know that this is a weaponized virus, and that's mm -hmm. why they're so scared. Yeah, that's why they're taking the precautions that they're taking. Did you know Nashua High School? One of the Nashua High Schools has been turned into a triage center. I did know that. That's crazy. That's, That's crazy. Where, where we're at because uh, – so when I was in the National Guard, um, you know, you, you can laugh. Yes, yeah, so I was in the National Guard. I did that for, for 10 years. I wouldn't um, laugh at that at all, man. Well, some people do. Well, the National Guard, whatever. We'll, yeah. we'll talk about that another time. <laughs> yeah. But uh, I actually volunteered um, – I volunteered for um, Surf P, which is um, essentially uh, – I can't remember the acronym anymore <laughs> – <laughs> but um, it's essentially emergency response planning, and and you know it's it's uh, trying to to prepare um, on the guard side what 
you know these state components would have to face if the governor um, said you know that we need more triage and the 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 um, hospitals can't take any more people the national guard could step in and and set up temporary sites and we're trained to to uh decontaminate people and and you know you're in the suits and you're you have you know the air tanks and everything and uh i lost 20 pounds no no i'm i'm sorry not 20 pounds holy cow i lost two pounds um like in one day from sweating. Yeah, I believe it. Twenty pounds. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> where that came from? Yeah. No, I lost two pounds in a day from wearing the suit um, wow. in that training. But uh, that's stuff that I will always remember because I took it pretty seriously because I know that these things are going to happen in the future. It's just a, a part of the way the universe is. I don't know. You know, it's yeah. you can't really script real life. Right. You know, like. If everybody uh, is, is stuck at home and they need a show to watch, Tiger King, trust me, I'm just going to plug it now because it's it's the new hot thing. But, like, you can't script that. That's real life. Those, those kind of people do actually exist. Okay. So go watch that. <laughs> I'll have to uh, check that out. Yeah. yeah so. Oh, so actually, let me, let, so let me make a point about that because sure. actually I'm really glad that you said that because a lot of people are, oh, like no. – I, 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 I've definitely been one that's been like, yo, we need to be prepared for this virus and stuff. I've, I don't think that fear mongering is a good idea. And I think no. that people are definitely inflating stuff that, sh that shouldn't be. Um, there's been a lot of movement of national guard vehicles all over the country and people are like, Oh my God, it's martial law. It's martial law. It's not martial law. The national guard is who sets up these triage centers and who, who is, that's that's the response team, the first response team for when we have a, you know internal disasters like this. So everybody needs to calm down about the national it's guard. It's not uh, only that, but people uh, seem to forget that sometimes the only way to actually transport any of the um, equipment that gets used is to drive it on the roads or to put it on trains. It right. doesn't just poof and <laughs> yeah. like show up in these places. So right. people that like see the military out in public, like they. They just don't get it. Like, how else are they going to get it there? Right. <laughs> yeah. Because I've done convoys. Uh, the longest convoy that I that I was on was from um, here to uh, Pennsylvania for Indian Town Gap, where we did a couple annual trainings there. And um, and I, I was in a Humvee, I think, like in the middle of the, of the, the uh, convoy. And, and to see the looks on people's faces, like they're like, where yeah. are they coming from? Like, what's happening? Like, they, they, they take their pictures to, to post on Facebook or yeah. whatever. And be like, we're all going to die. <laughs> it's like, oh, my God. We're like construction engineers who are going to annual training to do Army stuff for a couple weeks. Right. Like, you need to stop <laughs> the tinfoil hat crap, okay? okay. We're not. <laughs> If and if you know anything about the military, you know the National Guard is is kind of the the butt of everyone's jokes because, you know we we are civilians but but we do the guard on the weekends and and like in the summer times or whatever and but um, there's actually a lot that goes into that service because yes you still have a civilian life you have families you have school you have your you know careers and for a lot of people that's extremely time consuming yep um and and you know and then to also have to stay in shape and and you know fulfill the duties that that you are you know contractually obligated to fulfill it's a it's a really tough um but you know uh, balancing act and for a lot of people um they don't understand why it's you know 22 uh um, veterans a day are, are committing suicide and, and you know it's, it's not just from you know from um, you know from active duty it's on the guard side because there's so much pressure of trying to to balance everything that that you are uh responsible for and then imagine having to put that all on pause you know for a year to be activated yeah like, like i have been and like it's it's tough to go from you have your civilian life and your family and then like you're you are you are the military for yeah. a year that, that you know it, it's a hard transition and then coming out of that you know especially if if you lost people in combat or something or or if you're or if something happened at home and you couldn't go home to to you know to to process that or whatever it's like yeah you know there's just a lot that goes into the psyche of people who are already 
on on heightened um, anxiety and and just a lot of our emotions get exacerbated uh, based on certain you know all the circumstances that that we have n- you know um, no control over at all. Yeah, you know it it puts people in a tough spot, um, and I and I think that we need to take that. A lot more seriously. Oh, I would agree. I, so yeah. I'm not one to ever make fun of any, anybody's military service. I'm, mm. I'm, I never served in the military, and to be completely f- honest, that's probably that will be always be my biggest regret would be not going into the military. But I don't know if I have the right personality for it. I'm, I have a really hard time with authority. I've, mm. I've said this before. So I, you know, I I said the the you know same exact thing, but um, you know, again, being on the guard side you you kind of learn to appreciate it a little more because it's it's not what what you do every day so it's it's easy to compartmentalize what kind of environments you're in so that your mindset is set right yep. you know like yeah yeah it would get be hard to bounce drill. back and forth like that yeah i can't even imagine it's tough you know and yeah. it's tough for a lot of guys you know especially to to stay in shape and and i'll be honest like that's what what ended you know uh my career in the military was I had a really hard time staying in shape. Um, I think getting older has affected my ability to lose weight. Yeah. You course. know, and it's, I know it's for a lot of people that that's probably not a good enough excuse, but for me, um, I, my body type, it's, it's hard for me to lose weight. I, I tend to, to carry a lot. Um, so it, uh, it was hard for me to, to fulfill the running, you know, part uh, of the, I'm not a runner. <laughs> I, you know, I'll be honest that, that and, you know, and, and that's why a lot of people get out of the military is just yeah. the, the PT standards are just, it's tough for, you know, for, you know, for a lot of people to maintain that. Yeah. Um, and you know, I, I joined when I was 21 and I got out almost a year ago. Wow. Um, and it's, I, I have a lot of good to look back on, but, um, Based on other things that I went through, I'm I'm happy to be out. I'm 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 happy to be in control of my life. You yeah, know? yeah, I can understand that. Anyway, completely. we got like way in the weeds on that. <laughs> totally good, man. It's <laughs> we gotta go back to the original point of the virus. So like you know you know the military's involvement in this has nothing to do with trying to take anything over. Like right. if you talk to anybody in the military, I would say nine times out of ten they would never use force or violence against people. You know. If if you know if the government had had ordered them to, I don't think they would. Yeah, I know. I know there are a lot of guys in my unit that said that they, that, that that they would never do that. You know, <clears throat> and so I think that a lot of the fear from that too, where there are people that are very skeptical of that kind of authority, and so they oh, they, they you know they always have the worst case scenario. And that's definitely crossed my mind as you know. As as a as a freedom loving guy as I am, yeah. you know, it's it's it is a it's concerning to see the the military um, assembling, you know, around us for any reason. It's it's not a natural sight for us, right? Exactly. So, um, I you know I, I've there was there was during Hurricane Katrina there was evidence of I mean like video evidence of the sheriff's department going around door to door taking people's guns away and like Mm -hmm. i know that it's that's a different part of the country and they have different laws there and there's a good reason for that but man that would i they'd have to shoot me yeah (laughs) i'm i'm i i have said this on facebook like i would never in any circumstances release um release uh, oh my god! Really? Yeah, release control of your guns. No, I, I'm I'm trying to say relinquish my 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 uh, the natural right of of you know self defense and property. Yeah, and I think for a lot of people, because of they're scared of of what they're being told, they don't want to be a victim, so they're willing to sacrifice their their liberty for you know for that you know for that tiny bit of success. Uh, uh, security and and honestly like the the power and the scope of the federal government has grown like exponentially yeah. since you know since uh, you know 2001 yeah. um we we're so used to that now that them taking more and more power in the wake of a crisis isn't like a new thing yeah like so they're just like they went a solution but the solution is at the expense of all of us right you know right absolutely 
it's uh it's a scary thing and and this is i, I said this before that um Americans have never been through a major tragedy as a whole aside from nine eleven but nothing mm -hmm. nothing no natural disaster that affected the entire country no not that I can think of anyways um no. so this virus is a different thing because it has the potential to to affect the entire country and yeah. i I think that's that's part of the reason for people's um I think a lot of people are being kind of. Uh, I don't want. I don't want to say people are being stupid because that's the wrong choice of words. But people like like the spring break Dense. people and yeah. like it's that's not a smart move, you know. No. This and, but they don't. They just they, there's a, the, like an invincibility factor. I think as an American, like we've well, never really because well, we're being told that that a lot of the people that have uh, you know uh, they've died from the virus. Um, were usually the you know the you know the elderly or right. or you know people that were already immunocompromised and so they they think that they're safe. Right. Um, I think what what people um, they don't they don't want to think it's going to happen to them, so they just say, well, that's that's not going to happen to me because I'm in control and blah blah blah. But that's the thing about you know the planet is that it you know, we're treading on the earth, yeah. you know, like, so we're the, the parasites right. in some way. And so the, 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 the bacteria and, you know, the, uh, the, uh, the, the viruses that, that human beings um, can be killed from, I think is the planet's way of kind of like trying yeah. to get rid of us in yeah. some way. I, I agree. And that can seem kind of dark, but, but, you know, if you think about it, the, the the black death in the 14th century like wiped out almost all of uh you, you know europe and east asia like holy crap yeah you know yeah yeah I, I, the virus like i said viruses have always and it's i i don't remember reading about that when i was little it, you know, yeah but um you yeah. don't want to scare kids and be like well if, 65 yeah. million people died <laughs> yeah, one yeah. time. Yeah, yeah, Or know? the Spanish flu, that was another one. I think it was 18 million people died Yeah, the Spanish flu. So, it, it took uh, four centuries before um, they got the population back to where it was when the Black Death happened. That four centuries. Yeah. So, so I'm, you, know, as I'm, you know, as I'm reading a book about that, and it's really interesting, there are so many parallels between the 1300s and 2020 where human beings are so predictable, where we're like essentially doing the same things again, um, in the wake of, of things that are taking people out. Um, I had another point I had about the virus too. Um, oh, so like the young people, they're, they're the, the, you know, carriers that, you know, cause, cause, cause they might not, you know, show any symptoms, but they can pass it on to people that are susceptible to it. And that's the problem that we're having is that we don't know who's sick and, and, and who isn't. So me, like even being here, you know, like we're both putting ourselves at, you know, you know, like at the risk for, right. but I haven't gone anywhere cause I have right. nowhere to go. So. Well, I, like, I mean, we're close to six feet for the social distancing and close. that's only if somebody's coughing. Yeah. As long as I'm we're not, not touching each I'm other. I'm coughing like, from that. Not yeah. From <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Some good ass. Weed. So I want to make a quick point. Because uh, for a lot of people that that might not know me, um, I do have a slight speech impediment, which causes me to to stutter, and I, I think I'm having a a day. So, <laughs> I mean, it's uh, so like I'm just gonna let you do your thing. I don't yeah. know. Yeah. So uh, yeah, sorry. if you're in the middle of a thought, like I'm just gonna let you get it out. I like. That's. I think I'm having troubles with um, like S's and D's today. It's probably all the weed. It's probably well, I I try to smoke to to calm my brain down so my oh, okay. mouth can 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 cooperate. Okay. And I I don't think I'm high enough. <laughs> <laughs> well, dude, I'll fucking roll another floor. <laughs> oh shit. Oh man. So anyway. Yeah. yeah. So then, okay. So I mean, if if you already feel like the, there's been an overreaction from yeah, absolutely. Okay. You know, so like you see the hordes of people buying toilet paper like. I mean, from That's the government. Not... Yeah. No, I mean an overreaction from. <laughs> oh, from, yeah, yeah, from yeah, from the government. Yeah, from the government. Yeah. I mean, the at least I don't know how many states it's at now, but but there are so many states that are like they're telling people to stay home. I think it's all political. 
in my opinion, because, you know, if you think about it, everyone's up for election. So why would, you know, uh, a, 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 oh my God, why would a politician not take the opportunity to seem like the hero and the good guy so it looks good for him come election time? Right. There is, you know, not going to be a state that's going to say, well, we're not going to shut anything down, but everyone else is, is, you know, they're, you know, they're doing it. If they're doing it, you know, for the health and safety of others, sure, they can say that. But I, but I do think it's all political too. Okay. You know, and, and, and Trump is, is trying to seem like the hero as well by saying that, you know, we're going to pass a, 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 a $2 trillion stimulus bill when it's actually a $6 trillion bill with $4 trillion of it. Uh, going to Wall Street and the banksters and the corporations where, you know, peons like us are only getting $250 billion of that. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's pathetic yeah. That, that there aren't enough people, um, you know, except for, for Congressman Tommy uh, uh, Thomas Massey from, from Kentucky is the only one in the House who's like, where is this money coming from? Like, right. why are we not giving more of it to the American people? Right. And he's being shunned by, you know, Trump, who's saying, "Well, throw him out of the 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 you know the the Republican Party because he's not going to toe the line on this." And it's like he's just asking questions right. and saying like valid questions. And we're adding six trillion dollars to you know to the debt. We're going to be you know at a thrill. A a thirty trillion dollar debt. Right. It's our our that kind of debt is not you know you know sustainable. It's going to take a thousand years to get rid of that. It just devalues our money, our mm -hmm. currency, which already doesn't have value because we aren't on the gold standard anymore. So, no. <laughs> I mean, it's really it's it's Got that shit. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, it's a reaver, bro. <laughs> um. Yeah, so it's all that money that's going to the deficit. It just it 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 devalues our money, and it like so. My concern is after they push this money through, and they've already said, "Well, if it's not enough, we'll 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 take more." You know, we'll go back to the bank. Awesome. So they're gonna keep pushing this more stimulus bills through, and then. That's going to be Print pushed on, money. push, and it's going to be pu pushed onto the taxpayers. And at the mm -hmm. end of the day, they're going to raise our taxes, or mm -hmm. they're going to stop giving people income tax. They're going to say, "Oh, we're going to do everybody across the board that there's not going to be any more deductions. You just have to file this, file that." And then they're going to stop giving tax deductions away, and they're going to fucking jack up people's taxes to maybe yeah. forty, forty-five percent. Oh, it's not socialism because socialism is sixty-eight <laughs> percent. Okay, okay, it's uh <laughs> taking anyone's um, income. You know, for one, oh, don't even get me started because <laughs> the 16th Amendment is the bane of my existence. Like, that is the one thing that I wish right now, you know, we could abolish. And because that would undo everything uh, uh, Woodrow Wilson and FDR did in the early uh, 1900s, where they completely took a shit on the Constitution and said, you know, we're going to set up a secret, you know, shadow agency, the Federal Reserve. Yeah. And they're going to be in charge of our currency, but they don't have any accountability to, you know, to the federal government. They they won't be audited. Uh, so we have no idea how all of these trillions of dollars can just be printed out of thin air. And, and everyone's like, cool, I'm getting free money. You're not even understanding that. You're just putting more debt on your children's, you know, children's children. Do you think there's any gold in Fort Knox? Oh, I watched a, uh, a thing on uh, Netflix about that. So did I. Oh, what, what what show was that? Was it the Book of Secrets thing? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. That's another one. I mean, the America's Book of Secrets. The first couple episodes are really good, but after that, it gets a little, uh, it gets kind of stupid. But considering, considering the like the level like you you cannot get into Fort Knox like and and they haven't let anybody see it since the 70s the right. gold and they didn't let anybody see all the gold they, they only, saw like a portion one of staged it. room yeah, it was one so weird room. yeah so it was like they said it was less than a per, like i think it was like 20% or less than what was supposed to be in there at the time mm -hmm. 
of gold. So yeah, you know, well, because after we 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 um, got off the uh, gold standard, that's when um, was that FDR? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh my God, what was I saying? FDR took us off the gold standard. Yeah, and shit. No. <laughs> oh no! Fuck it, no, no, no! I had a good point. Oh my god, where did it go? It just like poofs. We'll give that You're there. Fleeting. Yeah, it's okay. It's like, it's <laughs> no, that good weed. It was so good. <laughs> it is the weed for sure. It happens to me like all the time. Yeah, fuck it, dude. Oh my god, shit! What was I gonna say? No, I have to think about this. All right. FDR and the gold standard. After we came up the gold stand. Oh, oh my god, Jesus! After we came off. You know, you know, the gold standard. Um, the federal government then bought up all the gold for from all the private citizens, yep. and said, "You will give up your gold, and you can be, you know, charged as a felon if you, you know, to, you know, you, you know, if you didn't comply." And the whole country was like, "Okay, here you go." Yeah. And they they consolidated the the entire country's gold, and that's where all the you know the uh, gold bars come from. But it's worth like six trillion dollars. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. That's um, insane. I I can't even fathom six trillion dollars. They know? they that's they say that it's been moved by trains years ago onto the London markets and it's all gone. Mm -hmm. It's that, probably more than than six trillion. That doesn't seem like enough. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> way yeah, more than that. Yeah, no. Yeah, I forgot what, what the number was because I think they said it in the in, you know in that episode what that gold yeah. is like estimated to be worth. There's no gold. There's no? no no gold. <laughs> None. Really? Nope. Really? I don't think there's any fucking gold there at all. You let me go on that entire rant, and you didn't. Oh, okay, all right. No, I think no, I just said me. I think I they I they said that they they after they collected all the gold. Mm -hmm. that, that's what blows my mind is they collected all the gold at um by force mm -hmm. and like what what exactly was the purpose for taking everybody's gold? They owed somebody a lot of fucking money, and they had to, and they had to pay up. And the gold in Fort Knox wasn't enough. Who are they paying it to? Who? China. China owns more of this fucking country than we do, bro. Like I, I guarantee, <laughs> like, or the or the crown. I mean, dude, oh, I've the, been, I've uh, been picked, dude. All right, so let together. me just say, like, I got a, I got a bunch of shit written down here that I need to research. Okay, the cabal, the Bilderberger. Do you know about the Bilderberg shit? Bilderberg. Okay, so I don't know anything about this. The Bilderberg meetings. Do you know about Adrenochrome? Yes. Okay. okay. So they did a movie these about are some of one. the things that I want to fucking look into and what like. So the bill. <laughs> <clears throat> this is all secret, like satanic government shit, and how the government is connected. Uh, like it's all this fucking one world power that's connected to the to the crown. Hmm. Soros and these fucking crazy super powerful people that have all the world's wealth. There's like a handful of them, dude. Hmm. And they're fucking Satan worshippers and blood drinkers and fucking child molesters. And I heard that. Dude, it's nuts. So like, I'm... So, have you ever been on Deep Web? Uh... I played the fifth. Uh, it's okay. You, it's not illegal to go on the Deep Web. Well, they they tell you it is. No. Nah. It's not, but yeah, you, should have, you should have to know how to get there. Oh, dude. So, like, I've been on it all the fucking time lately. Really? Yeah. All don't, the fucking don't time. Don't tell me what you've been looking at. No, because... So, you can... All right. Like, like I'm going to I'm gonna clear up a few mysteries about the deep web right now. All right? Um, number one... It's not all porn. <laughs> well, let me think about... Let me say... So, there is a lot of so, porn, but... Yeah. So... so to be honest, uh, like you, you're only gonna find porn if you click on buttons that say porn. And yep. if you want to find fucked up shit, you can find fucked up shit. But you can mm -hmm. steer clear of the fucked up shit and not have to worry about getting yourself in trouble. So that's pretty easy to do. Um, and that's what I do. But there's a lot of like classified files and crazy All the weeks. dude. Yeah. I found some. I found some 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 coded fucking books. Like every Every religious text you can ever imagine, fucking written in code, dude. It's the really? wildest shit. I'll show you after. Okay. Um, I found some crazy math stuff. Um, what else did I find? Um, say math? math. Math. People share people share their textbooks from college on there, like entire oh, okay. fucking that you can use. Like my 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 sixteen year old son does 
calculus and he uses vector calculus like that because he does coding. Okay. Um, so vector calculus is, and he does this in for for fun in his bedroom. <clears throat> yeah, dude, the kid is a genius. Wow. Um, so vector calculus, I found a huge file of vector calculus like books that are like help books for free. Wow. Um, there's, cool. so there's a ton of like documentation shit that you can find, like mm -hmm. f file storage, like dumps. And there's, there's supposedly like a lot of classified information. So I'm going to start researching like a lot of deep state stuff and like, Sweet, man. oh yeah, I'm so excited about it. That's, I'm curious to what you find. Yeah. Well, dude, I mean, all right, I'm going to, I'm going to probably edit this out of the video because I'm going to, I'm going to show Brandon what I printed right now. So, um, <laughs> Maybe I'll put it in another video. We'll call this a little teaser. Oh, dude, look at this. Yeah. I just printed this yesterday. Oh, I've heard about this. This is like cloud seeding, right? Yeah, dude. Yeah, I know that they do that. The government lies about it. They say it's not true. I don't... So like, dude, it... It would just make more sense if they were just like, yes, we've been manipulating... The weather to keep people from dying. Which is what they're doing. I mean, they're trying, I no, guess. But... No, they are manipulating the weather to make it rain more. Because there wouldn't have been enough drinking water if they, if they didn't. That's, right. the, that's what's in that fucking... I think if they were like more honest about it, this might not even be a big deal. But because they want to be secretive, it's like they're hiding something because it could you know, potentially harm us or something. Well, or they're not just seeding clouds for weather effects, but also for human effects experimentation maybe dude <laughs> who knows aluminum and barium like that's what they say that the chemtrails are all right so this is like just a little bit of the shit that i found Wait, on the deep chemtrails come on man don't even get me started come bro. on are you are you a chemtrail denier i'm gonna deny don't, don't make me jump over this desk right now <laughs> get out of here yeah, here with your what, so you tell me you you tell me why those motherfuckers are spraying patterns over over big cities and over the fucking like have you ever been out to Vegas? Do you know how many flights are in the air every day? And what you're telling me that that the those fucking those chemtrails are coming off of commercial flights? It's a vapor trail. Wrong. Okay. Okay. It's water vapor. It's it comes from the engine. So I'm not I'm not trying to I'm not trying to quiz you or anything. So what they say about about um about contrails is that it's condensation from the jet engines because they get so hot mm -hmm. and it's so cold up there that they condense and it and it creates the trail moisture. Mm -hmm. Sorry, my dog. I feel like my yeah. dog is fucking whining. It's because uh, the the door is closed and she can't come love us. I, well, I think that's my I think that's actually my my big dog Atlas, so he might need to go out. So oh. we might have to take a break in a second. Okay. But anyways, I want to make my point on this, right? So they get hot, they condense, right? First of all, if you look closely, the, those trails don't come off commercial flights. They only come off military jets. My dog's definitely crying. Yeah. Um, we're gonna stop right here for a minute. Yeah. All right. Hell yeah. So, I guess before we get off into the weeds about chemtrails, we'll save that for another one. We've been at it for at least an hour, so. Yeah. Um, but uh, I appreciate you coming over and chatting with me, man. This has been a lot of fun. I appreciate you having me. I'm going to I'm gonna give a, a little backstory before we say goodbye. So, Brandon yeah. and I have been friends for a couple years on, on Facebook, yeah. social media stuff. Um, we never met in person, um, but... You know, because we politically agree on a lot, we, we were friends. We had some disagreements, and those disagreements led to us kind of not being friends for a while. And then um, I reached out to him, and we kind of we decided to get together. And I think I think it's been fucking awesome, and I think yeah. that uh, we should definitely do this again. I can look you in the face and be like, You're a bitch. Like, hear me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I love you, man. Yeah. This has been awesome. Thank you so much for coming yeah, in. It, this is Skylar with Savage Truth, 603. Brandon Finney, peace out.